you're trying to do, what I am trying to do is, when I'm not working, build up my immune system and try and be as healthy as possible. So we know that means we should be eating vegetables, we should be drinking lots of water. Uh, but if you are faced with a child at the moment who's saying, why? Why should I be eating vegetables? Why should I be drinking water? What water? What is your response? Well, Catherine Rogers found herself in this very situation. So she created a blog to explain the science behind these instructions to young people, the code by which we are trying to live now as adults. She has a book which is called Gut Well Soon, and she joins me on the line. Hello, Catherine Rogers. Hi, <laughs> nice to be here. It's lovely to speak to you. So are we talking then about gut health? Are we talking about probiotics and all that sort of thing? Um, I think gut health is a lot wider than uh, probiotics. Um, it's all to do with um, a healthy diet and feeding the gut bacteria that need, that they're the ones that actually feed on the vegetables. We don't, they do. Um, and it's, you know, the actual gut bacteria in our stomach is, what, it's four pounds of it in the stomach. It's heavier than your brain. And they don't only live in your gut. You know, back microbes are all over the place. So it's not only about probiotics. No, it's about, in fact, it's mostly about feeding the gut bacteria with fiber. Yeah. So I'm really intrigued by this. And we need to say you're not a doctor. So um, No, I'm not. You know, so this I'm, is... I'm a mental health uh, therapist who's... Uh, just research the connection between mental health and nutrition uh, physical health yeah well Absolutely. you're preaching to the converted so I'm nodding to everything you say but you know a lot more about this than me because I absolutely I, I understand where you're coming from if we talk about gut health then and putting the good bacteria or whatever into our stomach that's fair enough but we're also so I you know I'm quite obsessed by this if you eat any processed food say you eat a cracker because you want a nice piece of cheese or you want a nice piece of ham on that or you want some hummus on it or something is the you know is what is in that cracker to keep it on the shelf for the length of time it is is it going to do undo all the good that the very good fresh vegetables and fruit that we're putting in our stomach is it going to undo all that well um it's a very interesting question I always say to my patients and um, my online program, we say health is 80-20. So, you know, you've got to have a birthday cake at your granddaughter's party or you've got to have a glass of champagne. But if you long-term eat foods that cause chronic inflammation, then that is going to adjust how your body uh, reacts to things. And chronic inflammation is not, you know, when you cut your skin and you get redness it's when the body is actually um it, it's reacting to things that it's not natural and so you have this low level chronic inflammation that is scientifically it's it's actually connected with lots of different conditions like diabetes arthritis mental health um so if you eat the cracker you know, if you have a cracker, it's not gonna it's not gonna make that much difference. But if you do have a bad diet with lots of processed food long term, absolutely. So this inflammation is very interesting. I've been following a couple of vloggers who've been talking about Ayurvedic and the fact that there are three types is it three types of uh body pitta? I can't remember, Vasa, I, think, I can't actually remember them all. But they talk in the very similar way to you about this inflammation that our body can be lacking one thing and being inflamed with another. Is that is that almost what you're insinuating? Um, I don't know anything about Ayurvedic, but I do know um, chronic inflammation um, means that our digested bacteria will release chemicals that actually will spur inflammation. So if we have you know, a good gut, it will actually suppress the inflammation and it's directly affected by what we eat. Um, and, you know, it's basically what our grandmothers used to eat. It's mm. fruit and veg, colourful veg, came, containing antioxidants, polyphenols, um, nuts and seeds, um, and, you know, beverages like the flavonols in, in coffee and cocoa and green tea. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's a 
it's a simple diet that doesn't involve processed foods. It's real food. So what do you think then? I've, I'm under the assumption that everybody at the moment is probably eating a lot healthier because you can't just nip down the shops. I, for one, have to, and I've never done a weekly shop. I still don't do a weekly shop. But I, I think now about what I'm going to buy because I don't want to stand in a queue for hours the following day to buy one onion or something. Do you know what I mean? So I am, I am actually cooking I am cooking soups and I'm doing stuff with all the, as much fresh produce as I can. And it seems that a lot of other people are as well. So would yeah. you say we are base at the moment? This is why nature is throwing us some really strange things that we are probably amidst this crisis eating a healthier diet. Would you say? Well, there's two sides to that. I mean, it really <laughs> upset me the other day to hear um, an HS nurse say that she just couldn't get any fresh veg, which clearly for her physical and mental health, um, and, and they're worried, over half of the NHS workers are worried saying they're not going to be able to get the food. I know that's not everybody in the population, and there's other people who've got a lot more time who aren't going to supermarkets or going to farm shops, and we're seeing that on my online programme, Reset Your Health, which is a four-week program personalised to how you eat and what your health condition is. And people are saying, oh, my goodness, I've done this recipe, but I've swapped this in because I was at the farm shop. And so that's just in the last two weeks. So, oh, how yes. Um, so yeah. just for people listening now, what are, I don't know, well, give us a two, oh, that's a big ask, but give us <laughs> two tips in this situation where we're all on limited time to shop, um, what we can actually achieve in the shops, what we can buy. Two tips to change your mindset. I mean, many people will be eating healthier and cooking from basics, but just two tips to get our gut into a better state. Mm, gosh, that's a big question. So eat more veg, definitely. Um, encourage the well, encourage um, gut bacteria. And as a result of that, my second thing I'd like to say is that you know, it's been shown that when you do that and you encourage the gut bacteria, you have less stress hormones, you have lower cortisol, and they don't know why the area of gut bacteria research is really in its infancy, but they, they found this gut brain access through the vagus nerve, and they do find that when gut bacteria are encouraged, you get less stress, lower cortisol. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. That's Catherine Rogers. Gut Well Soon is a practical guide to a healthier body and a happier mind. And I absolutely nod to everything she says.